everybody and welcome to another exciting installment of Wrestling Rampage. Wrestling Rampage back with another video. This is more of our lighter side of uh, what we do here on the channel. You guys have been enjoying some of our uh, uh, videos that we've brung out about stuff like this. Uh, the Bruiser, the murder of Bruiser Brody. Um, the, uh, the, the death of Miss Elizabeth and the Chris Benoit tragedy. Yes. Well, today we're going to be talking about the Von Erich family tragedy. What do you guys say, Pops? Uh, no, I, I'm just saying, you know, but uh, the, the, they, they can probably, you know, understand that, you know, with the, with the, with the cases that we got out here, both, both the, 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 the heroes of, of world class, and, you know. Uh, Triumph the tragedy of world class. Yeah, the tragedy. Uh, you know, uh, both good videos, really good. Yes, uh, uh, great documentaries if you guys want to learn about um, world class championship wrestling, the Von Erics, and some of the people that actually wrestled in world class championship wrestling. These are definitely two pickups that you guys will want to get in your wrestling collection. Fantastic yes. uh, documentaries, uh, Heroes of World Class, and this one, was, which was actually produced and by WWE. The good WWE. thing is, they both have great documentaries. They go in depth about world class. Fucking great DVDs. Most definitely. So we're going to go ahead and get into this video. The Von Erich family tragedy, all their real names are Atkinson. Yes. Uh, now their, uh, their ring names were Von Erich. Uh, and how WCCW came about was Fritz Von Erich and Ed McLemore uh, purchased Big Time Wrestling uh, in 1960. And uh, then they bought the Dallas Sportatorium. Yep. Uh, the most famous arena in, uh, in Dallas. Yes. Until it was uh, taken down. Yeah, it was taken down, which is tragic. I figured it would be a landmark. Yeah, you well, know. It should have been a landmark. You know, I've said this before, you know, and I'll say it again, you know, all, all the greatest, greatest uh, auditoriums that they wrestled in, I, I, didn't like, I didn't like like it because they, they tore it down just like I didn't like when they tore Louisville Gardens down. And they had, and they wrestled in the Reunion Arena as well. Yes. You know, and, uh, but the Sportatorium, that was a great building. And not only that, but they actually show them tearing it down in this documentary, yes. Heroes yes. of World Class. And it, sh and it shows Kevin Von Erich entering the, uh, Sportatorium. The Sportatorium. Showing, showing around. Yeah. Things Where like that. Where everything nature. used to be. And you know, back in that right there day, you know, who, who was who of wrestling wrestled at Sportatorium. Mm. Every wrestler, you know, that that coming that went through the Sportatorium to own to bigger and better places. They and, did. Yes. Uh, and they ended up purchasing the Dallas Fort Worth wrestling office to break away from Paul Bosch's Houston Houston wrestling. Yes. Uh, Paul Paul Bosch was a big uh, promoter in the Texas region. Um, uh, and after Ed McLemore passed away, Fritz got the sole ownership, um, in 1969, and he renamed it WCCW, yes. World Clash Championship Wrestling, in 1982. Um, but, you know, went on for quite a bit, um... And in 1990, he ended up selling the WCCW to Jerry Jarrett to be yeah. renamed the USWA. Yeah, the USWA came and ran the Sportatorium then. And I heard everyone was all happy about it. You know, mm -hmm. When they tore down World Class Championship Wrestling and rose up the USWA. And, but to me, USWA didn't fit. No, it didn't fit. It no. was, it was a t you know, it was a Tennessee that's Based. a Tennessee. That's a Tennessee promotion, yeah. and it didn't fit yeah. in Texas, in my opinion. Uh, no, you, you now know, were there some good talents yeah. that was yeah. still yeah. in? Still there. Uh, Steve Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there. yeah. Chris Adams. Chris Chris Adams uh, stayed. You know there there was Cactus uh, Jack. Cactus Jack. Um, uh, there was still some good talent there, you know. But uh, you know, you you really couldn't name if, if we sit here. And named all the wrestlers that that, that, went, that went through world class. I mean, 
we'd, we'd be here to spend them today. Oh, yeah. Because they were the best. There was a lot of great talent that came in world class. NWA worked for world class. You know, that's in the world champion there, Harley Race. Exactly. Rick Flair. You no, know, Ric Flair. You know, they had great talent in world class championship wrestling. You know, the Freebirds. Come on, Freebirds and Von Eric feud. Still one of the best feuds ever, in my opinion, you know, in world class championship wrestling. You know, they had great, and they had a great manager, Gary Hart. Exactly. You know, who, who's kind of underrated, in my opinion. As a manager, get, yes. Hey, as yeah. a manager, he don't yes, get the credit he, uh, he deserves. And actually, exactly he, right. Actually, exactly. He, he's the one that booked World Class Championship Wrestling. Exactly. Like he was the booker. Uh, you, you, know, you know, you talk about, you know, we talked about it before, you know, territory as well. That right there was a territory. As, as long and a, as, as, just like the rest of the territories, you know. Yeah. And, and they brought and they and they would switch just like they did before. They switch wrestlers yeah. out to go to other you know, they territories. Had, they had a great talent, Kabuki, uh, the Missing Link. You know, uh, Gino Hernandez. Gino yeah. Hernandez, That's it. Chris Adams, uh, the Midnight Express even wrestled there. Exactly. The Fantastics. Exactly. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to the Von Erichs now. Yes. So, yeah. um, the Firstborn. Jack Atkinson Jr. Uh, he ended up passing away at the age of six in 1959 due to an accident uh, where he was found unconscious by an exposed wire and uh, drowned in a puddle. Sad. Sad. You know, uh, I, I, have a, I have an eight-year-old, so, you know... Uh, I couldn't imagine seeing something like that. Yeah, that would kind of tear me up emotionally. Uh, it, you know, losing losing a child is is is, is probably the worst thing that, that I that I can find that happened to a parent. I mean, you know, you you look at it, you know that, you know, you 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 go before your your children does. And in, in this right here case, it didn't happen that way. And it was so tragic. I mean, it, it was just so tragic. I'm going to move on to the... We're going to go in from uh, the oldest to the youngest uh, in Kevin Von Erich. Uh, we're going to go ahead and each of you guys' input on, on, on Kevin. Uh, uh, which is the only one that's alive uh, yes. today. Uh, Kevin Von Erich, he looks in rough shape nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, but, but Kevin Von Erich was a hell of a talent, you know, he was barefoot wrestler. He was the only one to wrestle barefoot. Which was, which was yeah. very rare back in the day, you know, and he had great talent, he had great matches, team with David and Kerry as a six-man tag, and, and he well, was a great hand. Well, won all the titles in world class. Yeah. That's it. You know, Kevin Von Erich. You know, he, he was really good. Uh, I, I have I have to agree with you. You know, he he he, 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 he was he was great great talent. You know, he's he a great athlete. Uh, we we already said you know he's he's, he's the only one that ever was a a Von Eric to wrestle barefooted, uh, and he could really get in and go. I mean, the six man tag was you know they, they were well known for that right there. Uh, going against uh, uh, the Freebirds. The Freebirds. Oh yes, man. Now you talking about a feud? When the when the Von Erichs and the Freebirds got in the ring, you know something was gonna happen. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna go in from Kevin to David Von Erich. Uh, you guys' thoughts on David Von Erich? David Von Erich was a hell of a talent and a great talker. He he was a great talker. He cut a great promo. And he actually, to me, he was a way better talent than Fritz. He was better than the old man, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. And, and look, he was about to be world heavyweight champion in the NWA. He was about to be the NWA world champion. Mm -hmm. That's how talented he was. Uh, my my favorite feud was him and. Jimmy Garvin. Oh yes, him and Jimmy Garvin. Jimmy Garvin I, for the Texas title was oh, great. Oh, that was just. I do though. Know, while we while we're here, I want you to do that little skit. You know, you know that little skip that skit they did. Uh, you know, Joey the can do it. Ballet for a day. Joey yeah, can do it. Yeah, yeah. Joey can do his perfectly. This perfectly. Uh, you want to watch the dogs? Huh? You know, I watch them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. great. You said, <laughs> and my favorite. My favorite is when. 
fucking Jimmy Girl goes, I ain't fucking cleaning this goddamn <laughs> shit with them cameras on, so you might as well cut them cameras off. You're going to do it, Garvin, because you lost. And they, and they fought in the barn. Yes. And they, don't goes, and they go fighting over where the horses were. Yeah, it was fucking great. But uh, uh, David ended up uh, passing away. Who, yes. uh, before we get uh, who, uh, who, who, who was uh, uh, Jimmy, Gar Jimmy Garvin's uh, ballet at that right there time? Sunshine. Was, was it Sunshine? I, I, I'll never forget the time where, I, I, where, where uh, you know, uh, David told him, you know, I, I want that hay, that, 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 that pile of hay from this field to that field. Well, you gotta, you gotta keep the truck still, Miss Thorne. Oh, you ain't, you, we ain't used the truck. You're gonna carry it down there. So, so you know, he picks one up. Yeah, the big one up. And then she, she's yeah, walking yeah, right by. Yeah, get a bail. Get a bail. Get a bail. <laughs> he was just. Totally, I'm not doing this myself. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it was like you know, hey, you know, you lost, you know, and 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 you know, you you got to pay the consequences in that right there. And it was just, it was just a beautiful promo. Uh, David Von Erich uh, was the second to pass away. Yeah. Um, died in Tokyo, Japan on February 10th, 1984. Uh, the death report says that he died of acute enteritis, which yeah. uh, is a, a intestine uh, disease that you can actually get cured nowadays yeah. with yeah. medication. Yeah. All he had to do was go to the doctor and take some pills and he would have been just fine. But he... He kept pushing it off, and pushing it off, and I, and and I heard that uh, they didn't want him to go to Japan because he wasn't feeling good, mm. you know, because of that. But, but he liked to tour. He, he liked. He, he, liked to he wanted to fulfill yeah. his commitments to Japan. That's yeah. why he went. Because because uh, he he loved Japan, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and that's true about yeah. back in the old days. You always got to fulfill your bookings. That's it. You but, know, uh, anytime you're booked, you got to be there. But uh, Ric Flair and Mick Foley claimed in their autobiographies that they don't think that uh, that they actually believe that uh, David died of a drug overdose. Now, granted, uh, I think it was uh, uh, the referee David Manning and uh, Bruiser Brody that found uh, David dead in his hotel room. Now there was suspicion that they maybe flushed the pills that he was taking. Uh, well, you know, was Mick Foley there? Was uh, Ric Flair there? You know, I'm just saying, you know, were they there? A lot of, a lot of the Von Erics had a drug problem. Well, uh, it was the 80s. <laughs> that big black cloud that came well, over. Well, it's true. It was a big black cloud in the fucking 80s. D-R-U-G-S. Drugs. Like Skandor Akbar said on World Class Championship Wrestling Trump of Tragedy. I am. It was a big black cloud. I really can't say. You know, I can't say you know, that it was so drug related. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, the end result was he passed away. They had a tribute show for him, and he was going to be oh. world champion yeah, he was. at this time. He, he, he was going to be world heavyweight right champion. Right when he came back, he was going to beat Ric Flair for the world heavyweight title of the NWA. He was about to be. The NWA champion. Well, the tribute show, Parade of Champions, which was the biggest event at oh, yeah. that time. Yeah. And then they sung attended a, twice. Yes. And then they sung a great song, Heaven Needed a Champion. Yep. And did a great highlight video on uh, David Von Erich, yeah, which to, was great. Yeah, to, to, to honor David Von Erich. And eventually, Carey took on so, uh, Ric Flair. Won with a backslide. Uh, no, he won with a full Nelson pin to, Dave Mel uh, to uh, Bill Mercer. Bill Mercer. Yeah. A full Nelson pen. How can you a full Nelson pen? That's what it was. That's what, that's they, a, that's that's what, that, that's what Bill Mercer called it. But it was short-lived yeah. because... And uh, then, exactly. But the thing was, when he when he came out, Kerry, he was wearing that blue robe in memory of David and has the yellow flower on there, you know. Yeah. But my favorite, you know, Ric Flair does the job for Kerry Von Erich. You know, telling me ain't gonna be any trouble. I respect your family, but I'm getting that title back. Yeah, I'll be in trouble. No, there ain't gonna be any trouble. You just tell your <laughs> yeah, brothers yeah. and you tell your old man, Ric Flair, be back. You yeah. got it, baby. You yeah, got exactly, it. exactly what I do. I said, there ain't gonna be no trouble. But you, but, but you just tell your brothers and your and your and your father that Ric Flair will be back. And fucking care. You got it, baby. You got it. You got it, baby. You got it. Uh, and then, great, great little uh, little tribute show for David Von Erich. And then Ric Flair regained the title. 18 Japan. days later. 
Yeah. 18 days later in Japan. And I heard, now I don't know if this is true, but I heard the reason why Kerry lost the title mm -hmm. was because he was unreliable. With bookings. Yeah, With that's bookings. What I, that's what I, I heard too. that he wasn't reliable. Well, you might have the NWA champion, Kerry Von Erich, but on the card, but he might not show up. You know, you can't do that to the NWA oh, champion. Uh, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship could not be that way. Well, so speaking I, I, of Kerry, yeah. we're going to get into Kerry now. Yes, and uh, I think that's why the uh, that's why Flair got the title back. Uh, Kerry Von Erich, NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. Uh, even even though it was only 18 days, he was still NWA champion. Yes, he was still but, NWA champion. Um, the, the only Von Erich to... To win the NWA championship. To win the NWA championship, but also to win in the WWF yeah. yes. uh, as the Intercontinental Champion, as the Texas Tornado. Yes, and had a great match with Mr. Perfect at SummerSlam. Yes, he did. Um, and uh, shout out to... Nick Kurtz. Nick uh, Kurtz. We know you're a big Kerry Von Erich fan. Yes. So, uh, uh, but uh, to me, he was the uh, second best Von Erich, in my opinion. The first is David. I'm sorry, I, I like David Von Erich more, but but my second pick would have been Kerry. Kerry Kerry had the talent like David, and he had the uh, the uh, the good looks like Kevin did. You know, and but Kerry was a great performer, especially on his handicap. You know, uh, yes, he had a, he had a motorcycle he had that, accident. Yes, and, uh, and uh, amputated his foot. Yes, and, and, and so, some people didn't even know no, that, no, he he would, even, yeah. that he, he was had so good. Leg. He was so good, you couldn't even tell. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I thought Kerry was a great talent. Thoughts on Kerry Von Erich? I thought, I thought he was a great talent. Uh, now, you know, you, you want to compare, you want to compare him to, to, to David. I, th I think, the, you know, David Wood was the best, you know. But, but he, like Tommy, he, he'd be my second, you know. I, I really don't think that he could do, you know, real good promos like David could. But still, yet he was one hell of a talent. Uh, and, and the trouble, you know, him winning, winning the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. You know, that, that right there skyrocketed him in a way. And, you know, just like Tommy said, you know, that, that he, and you guys said he didn't go to his bookings, you know. And that's territory there. You know, you had to, you know, show up for your bookings because they switched talents out back in the old days. So, you know, if you didn't show up, that right there was a, that right there was a slap in the face. Kara Von Erich committed suicide on February 18th, 1993 for uh, a forty four caliber gunshot uh, to the heart on his father's ranch. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so he was going to go for target practice. And then they would get, he was going to come back and eat dinner with, with Fritz. And... Well, Fritz ended up going around the ranch and finds his son. because yeah, it was getting dark and dead. I, I tell he was you looking what, for Carrie and he finally found him. I'm going to and... be totally honest with you guys, you know. Right here, so I'm, I'm going to be honest with you and be honest, honest with my two boys here. I don't know I don't know what I would do if something like that right there was happening to my boy. So that's the that's the third. Yeah. And With death. And you, know. you know, and I don't know if it was because. Well, was, there was there was uh, he at the time he was dealing a drug problem. Yes, he was having a big drug problem. Um. Uh, and and he was and he got caught. Yeah, he and got he was caught by for, the police. Yeah, yeah, he was he was looking at jail time. He was looking at prison time, and and. He, and he try and his and his marriage was failing, you know. And, uh, and then he, uh, I think he was, uh, he was embarrassed. Yeah, he didn't want to have that shame yeah. on his he, family he, either. He yeah. didn't want he didn't want his family to go through trial and 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 have him on trial. And I think he was, uh, I think he was ashamed and I think I, and I, embarrassed. I, I, you I, know? I, I think the poor guy was looking for a way out. He didn't want to and, put the shame on his family. And he's like, I guess the only way that I can get out of it I, is just commit suicide. I, I agree. I, which, I, was, yeah. which is the wrong thing to do. There's yeah, other ways. There's, you know, the, the, there's there, other ways to handle situations. But, you know, some people, and we've, and we've already said this before, you know, that some people don't figure there's no other way out. But there is a way out. You just got to think of it. It may not be the, it, it may not, it, it, it may, you know, hurt you worse than that. But I can tell you what, I don't think nothing is worse than, your, worse than yourself to take your own life. I'm sorry. 
Then we go into Mike Von Erich. Yes. Um, Mike, I think he could have been doing better, doing something else. Uh, he was he wasn't really the best wrestler. No. Uh, he was a tall, lanky. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, he did all right. I mean, like he wasn't terrible, terrible. No. But he just he, he, he just didn't fit him. He didn't fit, and and he and he was small. Mm. You know, and I don't think his passion was wrestling. I don't think his passion was wrestling. I, I really don't. I don't think Mike Von Erich's passion was professional wrestling. Thoughts on that? I'm, I'm going to tell you what, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, I'm going to put him, and I, you know, not to see who was better or who was worse, but I'm going to put him in the same category as Kendall Wyndham was. Kendall Wyndham was long and lanky. He did not weigh that much. I, he, he probably weighed a buck old five, he, he, and he was just so you know just so he, he didn't he didn't have the weight, you know that 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 his brother did Kendall uh, uh, Barry did, and that right there is what I think was the total difference, and I really don't think that he that he really wanted to wrestle either. I think he wanted to do something else. Well, Mike suffered a shoulder injury on a tour of Israel, needed surgery. After the surgery, it was dis uh, discovered that he had. Suffer from toxic shock syndrome, uh, and he was in really bad shape, uh, fidgeting all the time. Uh, you know, and I heard he was about to die. Yeah, you could, yeah, that, yeah, so. yeah, you could die from that. He, he, I heard uh, he. Uh, yeah. So, so he ended up retiring, and uh, but on April twelfth, nineteen eighty seven, he committed suicide as well by overdosing on Transiquil. Yeah, and I heard he uh, went to a lake and. Had the pills and had some beer and had a uh, sleeping bag and slept right there until he passed away. Yeah, so that's uh, it, it, it's sad. So uh, you know, and I and I death four. So and, and he, I think he was again. He was in. Uh, I think like, he uh, he he thought he let the family down. I he think, thought uh, he let the family yeah. down because he because uh, he didn't. I guess he couldn't live up to the Von Erich name. Once, yeah, and, and, and that's, that's the thing. Of, I don't think he yeah. could live up to the Von Erich name. I think that's why. But I think I think another sad one note is that the boy died alone. That's that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. You know, I'm sorry for that. Um, yeah. Well, he's not the only one to die alone yeah. because the youngest Von Erich, Chris Von Erich, um, short stature, uh, was very prone to numerous injuries in his career. Uh, had asthma, uh, also yeah. could have done something. Kind of like Mike could have done. He, he could have done yeah, something else. Could, like yeah. uh, uh, he had asthma. You know, he couldn't take the abuse as a professional wrestler. You know, because he was so small, and he and he was and he had a whole bunch of problems. You know, and uh, and I think again, yeah, uh -huh. I guess he thought he. Uh, he diminished the name as well because uh, he, he couldn't he, live up to it. He was depressed and frustrated and not being able to succeed in wrestling like his father and his brothers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, also the death of, of Mike, who was the one that pretty much watched Chris most of the time. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you're, you're always closer to yeah. your younger... You, you, like, yeah. if you're the younger brother, you're closer to your brother before that. That's yeah. it. And, and, and the thing, thing, you know, when they tag team together, you know, he... It, it, Mike was always in there do, doing, you know, was in there taking the pounding, you know. So Chris and, didn't have to. Yeah, and, and, and he would he would tag him in. If you ever noticed it, you guys watch it, he would tag him in when he'd have the guy almost beat down. You know, well, I mean, he, he, to me, he was just protecting, which is which, which, which what brothers do. So in 1991, 18 days before his 22nd birthday, so he's only 21. He's pretty much the prime of his life. Yeah. Uh, he committed suicide by a self-affliction gunshot to the head. Once again, death five. It's sad. Um, yeah. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and get into... Uh, uh, th there's a third generation of the Von Eriks. Fritz was number uh, one. The brothers were number two. And Kevin's sons, Ross and Marshall... Von Erich has wrestled, uh, and they their biggest role was in TNA. And Carrie's was daughter Fritz still alive at this time? No, no. Uh, and Carrie's Carrie's daughter Lacey Von Erich had a TNA run. She yeah. was a knockouts she, tag yeah, team she champion. Won the knockouts tag titles. Uh, 
but you know, so she retired in 2010. You know, they're trying to live on the Von Erich name. You know, trying to, and and that's good. You know, you always want to follow your uh, dad's footsteps or grandfather or your grandfather. You but know, going to grandfather. There's the last one. Yes, Fritz Von Erich. Uh, died of lung cancer on September 10th, 1997, and how tragic it is that he at last four of his five sons. Yeah, it's, it's sad. You know, and, uh, and I heard that uh, Fritz had old timers around yeah. this time. Oh, well, and, yeah. Uh, and Kevin told the story, it was on, on the Triumph for Tragedy World Class DVD. They told the story every time when, uh, when Kevin would go see him, he would always tell him, won't you do what your brothers did and kill yourself? You know, he would make, he would tell him to do that. Mm. And, and Kevin goes, I ain't doing that. Well, before before we end this video, I just need no. to ask you guys one question. Do you think Fritz forced his sons to wrestle? Well, which is, has which has been a question for a long time. Well, Kevin said he wanted to be a football player, and and and, Day, and Day, it looked like David wanted to get in the ring, mm. you know. Uh, and and Kerry was a wanted to be in the Olympics. He was a good discus thrower. And, mm -hmm. But I don't think I think they wanted to follow in their dad's footsteps. I really do. I, I don't I don't think Fritz beat him up like like a lot of people say the story. Oh, Fritz beat him up and made sure to get him in the wrestling business. No, I don't think that. I think they wanted to get in the wrestling business because of their father. Uh, I'm gonna put this short and sweet. Okay, I'm gonna put it the vision of a father. Now, you two boys, I'm going to say this right here, you two boys, you know, if, I, if I'd if i have been a wrestler, would, would, I, would I warn you to follow in my footsteps? Damn right. Would I force you to? Damn wrong. You are your own people. You do what you want to do. Would I be proud if you did because it would make me happy? Hell yeah. But would I be sad if you guys went, went, went in different roads? Hell no. You know, I look at... So do you think he forced his sons into wrestling? I don't think he did. I, th I think that they went there. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't think he beat them to go. You know, I don't think he abused them any kind of way for, for them to force them. I, mean, I think he kind of encouraged them. them to I, I, yeah, I think he encouraged them, yes. Won't you do what I did? Mm. But, you know. But I don't think he made but, them. But, but I don't think. It was I, their choice. I, I don't think he put them in a line of fire the way he did. Well, their contributions to the rest of the business did not go unnoticed because they went to the Hall of Fame, the WWE Hall of Fame in class of 2009. Okay, Matt, you got this. Do you really think the Von Erichs deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I wanted to ask that right there question. You know, because you get this. There's right, some people that you get I'm that. Sorry. Well, this right here should this right this right here person shouldn't go, or this right here person go. I just wanted to ask you guys what you think. Yeah. Well, that was the Von Erich, uh, the Von Erich family tragedy video. I don't want to go. I don't want to go too long. I don't know if the video's gonna cut off or not. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and end it right here. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Rampage Two. Follow us on Twitter at Wrestle Rampage. Don't forget to subscribe to one of the best damn wrestling YouTube channels going today, Wrestling Rampage. Tommy, take it away. If you don't subscribe right here to Wrestling Rampage, then I guess you just don't know wrestling.